Central Minnesota Sky Line. Starting at point number two, Crystal Dangerfield. Starting at power forward number twelve, Tamiris Dantas. The other guard, number 14, Kayla McBride. At the other forward position, number 24, Nafisa Collier. Starting at center, number 34, Sylvia Fowles. Welcome to WNBA Basketball on 2K Sports. And in our matchup tonight, we'll see the Phoenix Mercury going up against the Minnesota Lynx. Thanks for joining us. I'm Blake Suniga here with Brian Banifatemi and Tim Swartz. Well, tonight we have two teams that put in work on the boards. Great rebounders. So what should we look for? Well, second chance points, that's going to be a key number to look at. You always want to limit those opportunities for the opposition any night but tonight there should be even more of those chances well for me i'm looking for who plays with more passion both teams are used to pushing opponents around down low so what happens when they face someone who is also great on the boards here's turner pass to diggins smith just five to shoot nurse back to diggins smith no good with the triple. Nafisa Collier on the wing. Defended by Nurse. And it's Collier missing. Here's to Rossi. Back to Diggins Smith. To the middle. Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. Reads the defense so well. It's really what makes Diggin Smith the top-notch point guard she is. Here's McBride. Off target from the baseline. You just assume she's going to knock those down when she's as open as she was there. Pass to Turner. Diggin Smith. Now Turner. From deep. Here's Greiner. Can't hit that one. The Lynx go the other way with it. The drive by Nafisa Collier. Soft touch off the glass. An all-around offensive talent. What a player Collier is with the handles to put it on the deck. Now here's Diggin Smith. Diana Tarasi on the wing. Pass to Turner. Good on the baseline, Jay. Great recognition from Turner right there. Knew how much time she had and let it rip on the catch and shoot. I'm not sure anyone's made more big shots over the course of their career than Diana Tarasi. If there's a big game on the line, Anybody ever in WNBA history, I want her to have the ball. Now here's Nurse. Pass to Diggin Smith. Out to Nurse. From the arc. It's hauled in by the link. And maybe Tarasi's made all those big shots because she's played in more big games than anybody. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about a gold medalist and a three-time national champion in college. She's come through in the clutch so many times. She might not even feel pressure anymore. That's where you like your shots to come from. Tarasi with it. 
Pass to Nurse. Outside, Diggin Smith. Shoots over fouls. Off the left rim and out. Here's Minnesota. On the wing, Kayla McBride. Just over three and a half minutes gone here in the first. Collier outside. Chance there to take the lead, missing. Down low, Reiner. And good work on the boards, and they pick up the second chance points. You know, throughout her career, I don't think Reiner's got the credit that she deserves for her effort. The second chance points she generates are just so huge. They show her hustle. Fast to Dantas. On the wing, Kayla McBride. Turner grabs the board. Terrific job defending the basket that time. It's not an easy task stopping her when she's headed to the rim. Here's Griner. Yes, and it's Skylar Diggins-Smith with the assist that time. Always easily above 50% shooting from the floor. Griner is deadly inside. Here's McBride. Hands it from short range. That's what I call a captivating move right there. She absolutely incinerated the defense with that one. Now here's Nurse. She hasn't scored yet. That, I'm sure, will change. Sinks that one from the post. Tarazi. Looking comfortable operating in the post. Tarazi has a great sense of when to attack from this area on the court. Here's Dangerfield. Reiner with the rebound. Well, you have to like the work in the boards here in the first. Yeah, coming out of the gates with great energy. You kind of like they got shot out of a cannon. They're really setting the tone. Boom. Now here's Tarasi. Reiner up top. Diggin Smith. Nurse outside. Offline with a three. Here's Dangerfield, guarded by Diggins Smith. The 11-footer, no good on the shot, a bit long that time. He a nurse into the lane. There we go. And now in the scoring column with that make. She is one for four. That makes it 10 of their last 12 points coming from inside the painted area, just dominating down low. And obviously, that's something the defense has to address. Here's McBride. Turner grabs the board. I guess even she misses those easy opportunities once in a while. Pass to Griner. Knocked loose. Stolen by Sylvia Fowles. Now Dangerfield. McBride outside. Shoots over Tarasi, hits the front of the rim and out. Well, offensively speaking, it has been a tough, tough quarter for her. Down it goes Dang. for her Dang. third Dang. basket and as many tries. A creative Dang. finisher, Tarasi uses her athleticism to create good looks for herself. Now a timeout called by Minnesota. And still plenty of basketball to be played. But Brian, is it too early to tell who the championship level teams are? Maybe, but I think the title teams, they're consistent throughout the season. So getting out of the gates fast really helps. Well, I'm going to disagree a little here. Yeah, that might be shocking for you, Brian. But uh, there could be a blockbuster trade out there, a major injury. So we just don't know what teams will look like come playoff time. I, I just think it's too early to tell.
The Lynx trailing. Here's Bannum. Pass to Achanwa. Guns up empty down low. What a start they've gotten off to on the boards. They've come out banging. And you know, I've seen it a million times. When a game starts off like this, there's an intimidation factor that comes into play. Here's Vaughn. A chance to extend the lead to double digits, but it's no good. Now here's Powers. Pass to Carlton. And here's Bannum. Six on the shot clock. Two in the drought. And she nails the jumper. And here's Cunningham. Two minutes. Hartley with it. Pass to Vaughn. That shot off. The Lynx go the other way with it. Now Bannum. Achanwa, good. Easily over 50% for her career from the field. Achanwa takes loads of high percentage shots. Now here's Hartley. Pass to Vaughn. Hartley. Here's Griner. Defended by Achanwa. Griner's shot is off. Here's Bannum. To the paint. Fouls. And she was camped there in the lane. And she gets the three-second call. Defeats. Phoenix in the lead. And here's Cunningham. She's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Over to the wing. Back to Griner. Good. And the assist goes to Bria Hartley. Okay, well, part of what makes Griner a great center is her ability to execute the pick and roll effectively. Here's Bannum. Pass to Achanwa. Off target at the rim. They've come out with a take-no-prisoners approach on the glass today. I love to see that kind of effort. And it's already gotten them a plus-five margin in the rebound column. And five-second differential between the shot clock and game clock. Griner collects the two points near the hoop. With an incredible motor, Griner plays with the attitude of someone just trying to make the team. Not the all-world superstar she is. Here's Powers. That three off the mark. And that does it for the first quarter. Mercury out in front. They're up by eight. And the second quarter is on the way when we return. All right, the second quarter beginning in just a moment. And what do you guys think about the Mercury here in this one? Simple. Defense. Defense, defense so far, and they have really clamped up. Say it one more time, Tim. Defense? Defense. Every shooter that challenges their defense has had a hand in their face. Inside, knocks it loose. Now Cunningham. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for her. Pass to Walker. Five to shoot. Hartley. For three. And Carlton pulls it down. Here's Shepard. Chanwa guarded by Walker. Back to Powers. Here's Bannum. Pass to Shepard. Shoots over Hartley. Shepard can't get it to go. 
hard work on the glass once again, guys. They've put a lot of effort into their rebounding. And that interior play, it's made a big difference in this game. Yeah, she had an established position. And that's the call you want the refs to make in that situation. If there's any doubt at all, it should be a block. I agree. Give the offense the benefit of the doubt. And we played just over a minute of basketball in the second quarter. Here's Cunningham. Defended by Achanwa. Down to five on the shot clock. To the inside. Shoots a fader. Reiner, shot is good. Wow. I mean, come on. That's ten straight points in the paint. The defense, it's just nowhere to be found. They have to start committing more bodies down low. Here's Bannum. And a fast break now for the Mercury. Here's Vaughn. And to the basket. She was fouled. And she's going to the line for one more. And the Mercury making a change here. And the free throw, no good. So the Lynx now. In the second quarter, held scoreless. Power shot is off. They have a really solid lead at this point. Definitely on the other side, really not much resistance put up. Maybe and it's one. good, two points. Their crisp passing has opened things up offensively. Yeah, it makes the game easy. Ten straight points off of an assist. Um, that's impressive. Here's Shepard. Wyatt so far offensively searching for first points of the game. Back to Powers. And there's the three-second three. violation. Three violation. He's not doing them the any favors three. making those kind of errors. Especially now with every possession being a critical one for them at this point. Just the worst time for it to happen. Quarter two and just under two and a half minutes gone by. Pass to Nurse. Now, here's Griner. She's guarded by Dantas. Back to Griner. Terrific assist and a nice finish. Just a solid play all around. And as they continue to dominate, you wonder just how much higher this lead might get. And it really could get out of hand because their defense has been just as excellent as their offense. Great overall game. Now, here's McBride. They need this. Mercury with the rebound. You got to give them credit for the job they've done on the boards. Well, guys, they've done a lot of things well, but yeah. their yeah. rebounding yeah. is right at the top of the list. And now we see them really working it inside. Yeah, getting quality looks around the rim. That's fueling this run. Now a timeout called by Minnesota. One word to describe the great Diana Taurasi is clutch. No matter the stakes, she can deliver. And that's a big part of what's made her such an effective player in this league. Here's McBride. In addition to winning games, Tarasi's clutch performances also won her her nickname. Yeah, known as the White Mamba, a name gifted to her by the one and only Kobe Bryant. And you know that is uh, so special that uh, Kobe gave that nickname to Diana. Intelligent passing to make that basket possible. Down low, Turner. It's good. The assist that time for us. Skyler Diggins Smith. They're going on a nice little run here. And getting to the rack has been the key. They're getting point-blank looks 
time and time again. Here's Dangerfield. McBride with the ball. And it's Brittany Griner with the rebound. Plus eight in the rebound differential. Uh, one more reason they have absolutely just controlled this game. Yeah, double-digit advantage on the scoreboard. They've taken the initiative for sure. And it started out with the rebounding. It sets a tone. Megan Smith's shot is off. And she doesn't miss many of those, uh, especially with the defender not in the best of positions. And here's Dangerfield. And stolen by Brittany Griner. Now here's Diggin Smith. She's covered closely. Now the Lynx with it. They trail by 18. McBride with the ball. Griner's there. McBride with the ball. She's picked up by Griner. Now here's Diggin Smith looking for her first basket still in this one. Pass to Tarasi. Cans it from downtown. The ball Three movement points. on this run has been fantastic, and it's a big part of why they've been able to get good looks. Absolutely, the defense unable to react quickly enough to, to deal with their passer. And here's Dangerfield. No good. And she's off to a slow start, one for four. And it's Dantes with the foul. Demiris. That's her first foul. First personal foul, team's first. Third team foul, Dantes with the foul. First personal foul, team's first. Third team foul. In for your Minnesota Lynx, Sylvia Fowles. And so here's Phoenix. A 21-point lead, the biggest in this game. Pass to Nurse. Tarasi right side. And that comes yeah, off the Tarassi. assist by Kia Nurse. Assists like that have typified their effort today. Great ball movement. Timeout, Great timeout. ball movement, timeout. indeed. That's an example of the difference in how these teams have operated offensively. Much more individual play at the other end. Minnesota calls a timeout. Well, named an all-star in 2019, the success of Kia Nurse spans far beyond the WNBA. Outside. Dangerfield. To stop the drought. Skyler Diggins Smith with a defensive effort. One item that stood out is their ball movement. Things are definitely clicking, and more importantly, it's tough to defend. Here's Dangerfield. Guarded by Diggins Smith. To the wing on the left. Pass to Fowles. Collier. And here's Kayla McBride from the arc. Sinks the three-pointer. With a smooth touch from outside, McBride's versatility leaves defenses pretty vulnerable. Now here's Tarasi. She's got 12. Back to Diggins Smith. And she was fouled in the act of shooting and opportunity for a three-point play. They've really turned it around offensively. Oh, well, you know, anytime you can make more than half of your shots, you'll take that any day. And Skylar Diggins-Smith, I mean, obviously, she's someone who passes the eye test. Her numbers also, they back them up. She's so impressive. And you know what? That doesn't even begin to tell the whole story with her. Shooting one. 
And so much of the impact of Diggin Smith goes beyond the stat sheet. Yeah, she's got a great sense of how to create for herself and others. She's been a leader her whole career and always shows up when you need her most. Now here's McBride. She has five. Six to shoot. Here's Dangerfield. Drops in the layup for two. The little knock is going to mess up Dangerfield. No way. She's totally locked in. Phoenix dictating the flow. Nurse outside. Pass to Tarasi. The floater. Here's Turner. Not happening that time. Her second miss, five shots. The drive by Nabisa Collier. He and Nurse playing some nice D. Now here's Tarasi. McBride Diana covering. Tarassi. And the basket by Tarasi. And what a performance we're seeing from her. Not one miss today. Remarkable. Pass to Dangerfield. Now here's Collier. Shot clock at six. Two minutes. Dangerfield. Another three for Minnesota. Don't underestimate Collier's ability Time as a distributor. She'll make passes that make you say, wow. Timeout called the Mercury. The 2020 Rookie of the Year, Crystal Dangerfield was the lowest draft selection to ever win the award. Changing it up here. Phoenix dictating the flow. Selected in the second round, Dangerfield also led her team in scoring as a rookie, but her role changed in her second season. That's right. Dangerfield moved to the bench early on in the season. And while that would be maybe tough for some, Dangerfield has accepted the role. She thrives in that six women role, and that speaks to her maturity, showing that she can be effective starting her off the bench. Here's Bannum to the middle. Here's Achanwa. Evens things up with that basket. Her second of four, shooting 50%. She can time her passes so perfectly. What an assist. Now here's Diggins Smith. Three Kia Nurse. It's good. The assist that time from Skyler Diggins Smith. What a dangerous player in the pick and roll. Nurse knows when to take it. That's the key. Knowing when to pass, knowing when to shoot. Here's a Chanwa. And that one's good. Collier. Ran her defender straight into that screen to open up the lane to the hoop. Defense. Defense. Now Diggins Smith. Pass to Vaughn. Tarasi with it. Four on the shot clock. From deep three-point range, doesn't go for her. Now the links take it the other way. Eight-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Power's shot is off. Now here's Tarasi. Defense is right there. Watch ball! Yo, look out! Sixteen feet out. That shot off. And through one half, it hasn't even been close. It's the Mercury delivering the blowout.
And we'll be back for the second half following the break. Keep it right here on 2K Sports. wasn't even close and we'll see if there is a comeback on our hands or more of the same as we get the third started we're seeing a tremendous game from Tarasi her play in the first half was very disciplined very efficient her shot selection was consistently excellent that's right and uh, whether it's been from mid-range or in tight she's taking only what the defense is giving her and not trying to do too much Welcome back to the start of the second half. Big margin on our hands, but we'll see if that gap narrows down in the final two quarters. Pass to Collier. So the whistle blows on the shot. Two free throws for the contact there. For an example of how unpredictable draft picks can be, look no further than Defisa Collier. She was picked sixth overall but became an instant all-star in his debut season. Two. Two. And the first one at the line is good. And thinking back on it, Nafisa Collier did have an incredible rookie season. Uh, she came into the league hot. Nafisa playing at a high level and making a big impact, earning her rookie of the year and a trip to the All-Star game. And that's good as she hits both shots. After becoming the WNBA's Rookie of the Year in 2019, it's safe to say Nafisa Collier has a bright future in this Ricky league. Greiner. She's carrying a lot of the load offensively, and normally that's good news for them. Here's Dangerfield. Pass to Dantas. Now McBride. Sweet little floater. Every year, McBride works on improving additional aspects of her game. So it's really no surprise to see her well-rounded offensive game that includes such a sweet floater. Now here's Nurse. And she drops it in from the low post. And with a little over a minute gone by, the second half underway. Right outside. Yeah! Unable to get that one to go. Diana Tarasi with some really nice D. Not her best performance scoring the ball thus far. Out to Nurse. Five on the clock. Reiner. Goes up again. Miss number four for her from the floor. Seven for 11 field goal attempts. Here's Collier. The shot's good. Uses every bit of her strength to overpower the defense. Collier does not fear contact. Pass to Tarasi. To the paint. It's stolen by McBride. Here's Dangerfield. And no good. And the Mercury going the other way now. 
The biggest lead of the game was 24 points. Poked away and stolen by Collier. And stolen by Deanna Tarasi. For three, Kia Nurse. Good on the three-point shot. You can't just let a player like Kia Nurse get comfortable because she shoots it well on catch and shoots. Pass to Dangerfield. McBride outside. Fouls with it. The jump hook. The shot's good. Kayla McBride making the play. Understanding defense is better than most. McBride's a playmaker with an advanced feel for the game. Now here's Tarasi. 14 points for her. And yep, it's good. She's having one of those days where if she takes it, she makes it. McBride outside. Fast to Dantas. Here's Fouls. And another shot. And the layup is good. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. I mean, there's more holes in their defense than in a block of Swiss cheese. Man, you just made me hungry. But, but that's right. Five of their last six makes were in tight. They've established themselves inside. Where's the cheese? And the Mercury call time here. I don't know if we're ever going to find a better rebounder than Sylvia Fouts. He's a player that controls the boards every game she plays. to Cunningham. Here's Nurse. And here's Turner. Foul called that time on the way up, and that'll give her two chances at the free throw. That's on Kayla McBride. And with fouls, she became the WNBA's all-time leading rebounder in 2020. What a remarkable accomplishment that was, and it really speaks to Fowles' non-stop energy on the glass. Shooting two. For her entire career, she's been a rock in terms of rebounding. First free throw is good. After suffering a torn ACL in college, I'm excited to see what Turner has in store for her WNBA career. That's also good, so she hits them both. This Lynx squad struggling. Inside, Carlton banked in off the glass. Another bucket in the paint. That's just something they have not been able to stop today. And if they want to win this game, they got to figure out how to stop it. You know, Brian, I think it's time to switch things up on D. What they've got going on right now is not getting it done. Here's Cunningham. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. That one, good for two. Yeah, she's played an important role in her offense today. And really, without her, they might not have the lead right now. Pass to Dangerfield. Back to fouls. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Second personal foul. It's going to go on Brittany Griner. One of the top players down low in the WNBA. The closer to the hoop, the more dangerous Fowles is. And this is her first free throw of the game. Two. 
No good on that one. Everybody knows about Sevilla Fowles' defensive reputation. She's also led the WNBA multiple times in defensive rating. But you look at her offense, she's also paced the league in true shooting percentage. And she sinks the second. With the WNBA passing the 25th season mark, I love to put you guys on the spot. So here we go. Which is the best team in league history? I'm going to take it way back on you two and bring up the 2000 Houston team. They won the title for the fourth straight year and were one of the most efficient teams offensively of all time. Give me the 2019 Mystics. They also won a title, finishing with the best offensive rating in the history. Really what's most impressive, they set a lead record with 12 wins by 20 or more points. I mean, you don't see a lot of those. I mean, they just dominated the competition. Relax on the first. The first free throw is good. One place Kayla McBride always takes care of business, the free throw line. She consistently sinks her foul shots, making the competition pay for every trip to the charity stripe. She's perfect from the line this time. Averaging around 90% from the foul line has always kept Kayla McBride among the top WNBA players in that stat. If not at the top, she's ended seasons with a free throw percentage well over the 90% mark. I mean, she certainly is one of the best we've ever seen at the strike. Powers with it. No scoring yet from her, but that's likely to change. Pass to Carlton. Here's Shepard. Ariel Powers on the wing. Just five on the clock. Tries it from 19. And the jumper is good. An efficient score. When Powers sees there's some space to get her shot off, she does not hesitate. Hey, look here. Here's Cunningham. Powers covering. Over to the left wing. Here's Hartley. Sylvia fouls with a defensive effort. Outside powers. McBride up top. Takes the three. Trails the three-pointer. If you carry yourself with confidence and work on your craft like McBride does, I think you'll always be a threat to score like she is. Now here's Hartley. Here's Kia Nurse from the arc. No good, and she's now missed as many as she's made. Five of ten from the field. Shepard, defended by Nurse. From 13. Here's Fowles. And there's the bucket. Staying with it that time, and offensive glass getting it done. Here's Cunningham. Powers covering. Pass to Nurse. And here's Turner. And no good. The dry spell continuing for him. Now Shepard. Wyatt so far offensively searching for her first points of the game. Can't connect from 14 feet out. And there's the foul. It's on Powers. That is her first foul of the game. And these calls, they can be some of the, the toughest calls for officials to make. But in this case, I think she got it right. The defender's still moving there and never really got set. Now here's Hartley. Pass to Cunningham. There's the three. Bannum with the rebound. Here's Minnesota. It's a 16-point game. And Walker is going to pick up the foul. 
as the first foul of the game. Fourth team foul. In for Phoenix. Outside powers. Out of bounds, it'll go to the Mercury. Mercury ball. Here's Hartley. She hasn't scored yet. That, I'm sure, will change. It's Kia Nurse on the wing. And she can't stop this drought. Another miss. To the paint. Here's Collier. And count it. Two points with a chance for one more at the line. They continue to get it inside. The defense struggling to just contain them. And look, when you make five in a row from in tight like they have, it also just takes pressure off of your perimeter, guys. Great point. And there's a little throwback to Collier's game. You know, she works inside the arc, takes good shots, rebounds, and she's just a stone-cold winner. Now here's Hartley. Pass to Walker. Reiner with the ball. Here's Nurse. It's hauled in by the links. And we first saw Collier's influence in college. She led Connecticut in all four years she was there. Yeah, and then went on to win Rookie of the Year in 2019, made the All-Star Game, and has not let up. This is really just the beginning for her. Shot clock at five. Here's Collier. No good that time. And the Mercury going the other way now. The biggest lead of the game was 24 points. Here's Hartley. And again, unable to change momentum here. Powers with it. Reiner's there. Powers' shot is off. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's been the result for her over and over. I mean, she just cannot find the bottom of the bucket. A great job of attacking on the break. Yeah, exploding to the bucket just as soon as that ball was going the other way. Now here's a Chanwa. Back to Powers. Second chance shot. And that's two points on the layup. So far, going for more of an inside game here in the second half. About three seconds between the shot clock and game clock. Nurse outside. Back to Hartley. Shoots over a Chanwa. Hartley, good. Yeah. Such a nice release on Hartley's J. She gets rid of it in a hurry. Doesn't need a lot of separation. Here's Fowles. And the layup's good off the glass. Check out that assist. That's a pair of teammates on the same page. And as we end the third quarter, a double-digit deficit will make it tough to come back. It's the Mercury. They lead by 13. And we'll be back right after this. And we're rolling here again with the fourth quarter. Might not come down to the wire, but you never know. And so here's Phoenix, 13-point lead. Here's Greiner, here's Hartley. The three-pointer off the mark. Well, they're winning despite her errant shooting. Dangerfield, that's good. Playing way bigger than her listed 5'5 five, five height. Dangerfield playing the game with passion. Outside, Diggin Smith to the wing, right side, pass to Walker, down low, 
Reiner, and the layup is good after a nice lead pass. Excellent work offensively to get that shot attempt into a can't-miss area. And here's Dangerfield, guarded by Diggins Smith. Shot from 12. That one rolling around and rims out. Fourth quarter just getting started. One minute in the books. Rossi outside. Yes, and it's Skyler Diggins Smith with the assist that time. One of the most daring scorers in the league, Tarasi excels at finding ways to score despite tight defense. Here's Dangerfield. Can't connect from short range. Outside, Diggins Smith. A little over a minute and a half of the fourth quarter gone now. He can't get that one. And Minnesota the other way now. Outside powers. 14 feet out. That misses off the backboard. And the Mercury with possession. A great fourth quarter just giving up two points. First team foul. Into the lineup for Phoenix. Brianna Turner. And we're around two minutes into the fourth here. To the inside. And the officials whistle a foul on the shot. The bucket's good and she'll go to the line. Since entering the league, Brittany Griner has been an absolute force on both ends of the ball. She'll go down as one of the most prolific defenders in WNBA history. And Griner's blocks numbers, whew, they're ridiculous. I mean, she was the WNBA blocks leader each of the first seven seasons of her career. Yeah, already top three all-time in career blocks, and I'd be willing to bet that uh, maybe by the end of her career, Brittany Griner, the all-time leader in blocks in league history. Here's Dangerfield. Clock at six. Here's Dantas. And again, no good by Minnesota. A slight rebound advantage to them. One more column in their favor. It's all adding up. Well, you look across the team stats, it's one of many areas they're winning, and they've secured a big lead. It looks very sharp tonight. I'm loving it. Megan Smith's shot is off. She's trying to, to shoot her way out of it. They have the lead. She might help by being a little bit more selective tonight. McBride outside. Looking to end the run. A rebound by Brittany Griner. You can tell she thought that triple was going to fall. She's just shaking her head after that miss. Pass to Tarasi. It's good from yeah, long yeah, range. Tarassi. Well, she's the all-time leader in threes made in league history. Uh, you might not want to let Diana Tarasi get off shots from range. Time called here. The Lynx decide to talk it over. If you're a WNBA fan and you want to see your team play on the road, what's the best city for a road trip? Oh, this one's easy. Vegas, baby. The Aces organization, you know, they've done an incredible job. In a newly remodeled, great arena. Plus, if you go at the right time, you could also catch NBA Summer League. And, of course, it's Las Vegas, guys. And there are plenty of other things to do in Las Vegas. Right, Tim? I think I saw you at the blackjack table last time we were there. But I don't think you were doing too well. Anyways, I got to go with New York. There's just something about the energy of the big city. And there's a reason why some consider NYC the basketball capital of the U.S.
struggling to keep up. We'll see if they can turn things around on this trip. They can't continue to come up empty. The drive by Kayla McBride. All by herself. Shots good by Tarasi. It's hard enough stopping Tarasi at the half court. In transition, it's just too easy. You can't let that happen. Out to the left wing. Collier guarded by Walker. Pass to McBride. Back to Collier. Over Walker. And the Lynx miss again. Boy, I mean, they can do nothing right. They cannot take the lid off. They need a bucket in the worst way possible. They have got to stop this run somehow, or it's really going to get out of hand. This defense is getting eaten up on the inside, guys, giving up far too many free runs to the rim. And they haven't been able to return the favor. Their offense in the paint hasn't been up to par. Now here's Collier. McBride outside. Pass to Dangerfield. Yes, and it's Lisa Collier with the assist that time. Her first three of the half, second of the game. Can she heat up? Reiner with the ball. Defended by Achanwa. Reiner's shot is off. And here's Collier. To the middle. Here's Dantas. And that one goes in as she's fouled. It'll be three points if she can convert the free throw. And discussing the Brazilian Demiris Dantas, you gotta love her unselfish attitude. She's just someone that's willing to do it all for her team. One shot, one shot. And that one misses. Well, sometimes Donta starts, other times she comes off the bench. She's ready to contribute whenever her name is called. Well, now Donta is, is a veteran in this league, has a strong really understanding for her strengths, and she plays to those so well. This team really loves having her. Now Dangerfield. McBride outside. Dangerfield. Fouls with it. Here's Dangerfield. Over Nurse. And she sinks that one, hitting the back of the rim on the way in. You know, I just love that shot selection from Dangerfield, the in-between area of the court, usually open these days. Pass to Tarasi. And for WNBA front offices, perhaps the biggest challenge is navigating the cap. It certainly affects team building. Yeah, and there's an extra yes, emphasis yes. on developing yeah, talent, developing draft picks. Rookie contract scale is so much lower, so a good player still on their first deal, they can have incredible value in this cap system. And the cap forces you to make tough decisions. We've seen some top role players traded over the last couple off seasons because teams just didn't have enough room for them and their stars. Look at the scores mentality from Collier. Fantastic at finding ways to get fouls on the way up. And the first one drops. I like that they haven't lost their aggressiveness here in the second half, despite the deficit. That's exactly when you need to be aggressive, Tim, right? I mean, yeah. another good job of drawing contact and getting to the line. you got to force the issue when you're down, as you were saying. And so she makes both from the line. Well, after she didn't have a single free throw attempt in the first half, she's been much more active since halftime, drawing some fouls. Now here's Diggins-Smith. 
Here's Kia Nurse from the arc. Made that one. It's her seventh of the contest. Seven for 15 from the floor. We're seeing her bring that shooting percentage up now, which is good to see because the first half was a real struggle for her. The left wing. Dick ride. She's covered by Tarasi. Pass to Dangerfield. Minnesota the rebound. Yep, that one goes. We love to see the hustle from Dantas working hard on the offensive boards. Now here's Diggin Smith. We've seen players gain more power in the WNBA, especially since the new CBA. Yeah, more freedom of movement. That's one of the, the things players really wanted and got in the last CBA. But also things like travel, a career development opportunities, maternity and child care. Those got some big time upgrades for the players. Yeah, and much better compensation. Lots of top players now seeing their salaries triple. Kudos to the league and players for coming together and reaching an agreement that invests in our game. And here are the links now. Pass to McBride. Gets a three-pointer to fall. A shooter who doesn't really need much space to be effective. McBride has a quick and accurate release. Now here's Tarasi. Ball's knocked loose. And here's McBride. Pass to Fouls. Unloads from 13 feet. That falls. Great assist by Kayla McBride. Not known for her ability outside. Fouls can knock down a shot every now and then. Helps keep the D honest. Now Griner. Turner. She's guarded by Dantas. Now here's Griner. Nurse. Over Collier. The Mercury with another miss. Right outside. And it's one of the biggest questions in WNBA circles. When are we going to see expansion? I think we will soon. There are significantly more than 144 great women's basketball players in the world. And talent-wise, this league can more than handle a couple more teams. Oh, from a, a business perspective, there are untapped major markets in the United States, in, in Canada, yeah, yeah, maybe other awesome. places around North America, some opportunities to engage new fans. To me, it's a win-win for the league. And, Brian, I think it's coming soon. Now here is McBride. Pass to Dangerfield. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Collier. Count it from 12 feet. Well, it's a player who does use the mid-range. It's part of what makes Collier difficult to defend. She can score from everywhere on the offensive end. Outside, Diggin Smith. So it's Phoenix easily grabbing this one. A resounding victory for them and in enemy territory, no less. It was enemy territory. But with the way that they controlled the game, they took the crowd completely out of it. That's how to get it done on the road. And that's a wrap, everyone.